Okay, so maybe we should try some karaoke now that I've seen. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to do a little bit of a warm up before we start. And I'm going to ask you to start clapping and you just follow as I raise my hand. Okay, just very politely. Then you raise, start some screamings. Yeah. Okay, now I give it to Evan Yu. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? So, I'm super excited to be here. And with this awesome crowd, over a thousand people, and this ridiculous screen, <laughs> it's just amazing. And I want to really thank the team, Luke and his team, for putting this together. Uh, I really appreciate all the effort, and I'm really glad to see um, we also get a lot of team, uh, core team members here as well. So thank you all, and um, so let's get into it. So today, this is going to be a general talk about the state of view and um, some updates since we, uh, I, last time I think I did such a, such a talk was uh, at least half a year ago. So. Quite a few things happened in between that time, and I just want to uh, catch up with the, some of the things we've done during that period of time, and also take a look back at what happened in 2017, because I didn't write a, a 2017 post this year. I did one last year, but... So, Vue was the most starred project on GitHub in the entire 2017, with over 40,000 stars gained in the year. And the growth was phenomenal. We gained, so we grew from 7.6 thousand to 37 thousand from 2016 to 2017. And then we gained even more stars, uh, got like close to 40, 46,000, uh, counting from start of 2017 to today. So over 122%. NPM downloads, even better. Um, in 2017, so the entire 2017, we got, uh, so, so this is from the uh, beginning of the first NPM publish to the start of 2017, we got only uh, 0.21 million downloads, and then by the beginning of 2017, we got 1.78 million, and now we're at 9.72 million, and uh, over 1 million downloads per month. And DevTools weekly active users. I like this metric a lot because I think this is a very uh, one of the most accurate metrics to to tell actually how many how many people are using Vue.js around the world and. Uh, we have now over 355,000 users around the world, and uh, in 2000, uh, counting to today, this morning. So I took those stats this morning. So uh, over 300% growth since last year. And uh, financially, the patron and open collective campaigns are going really strong. Uh, so big shout out to all the sponsors that are sponsoring VJS on both on Patreon and Open Collective. And one of the things, so now that we've got our open collective with a very decent budget as well, um, so we're planning to open this up with a public process. So uh, contributors from the community uh, can start, uh, can make proposals on major features if they want to spend a big chunk of time working on a big feature. Uh, they can make a proposal and then expense the the pay from from open collective, and we want to. Uh, all the funds in Open Collective will be dedicated to uh, team and community work. So, new releases since 2017. Um, the latest minor release is the 2.5 level E. This was made in October, uh, and it came with improved TypeScript integration. Uh, you don't even need to use classes, and you'll still get great type, TypeScript inference, and if you're using VS Code with Vader, uh, you can even get type inference without using TypeScript at all. Um, improved error handling. Uh, we now have the error captured hook combined with uh, an abstract component. You can create uh, error boundary components 
uh, that can capture the error from a subtree of your application, uh, which opens up a lot of interesting possibilities for uh, error handling. And we also now support functional components in single file components. Now, Core was um, only a small part of the ecosystem. Last year, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is um, Vue is growing to, has, has already grown beyond a single person project. Although I work mostly on Vue.js Core, there are a lot of other important projects in the ecosystem that are maintained by the core team members. Uh, for example, ESLint plugin Vue. It's a, it's a pretty big effort because it involves writing an entire custom parser from the ground up called uh, view ESLint parser that uh, replaces ESLint's default parser. And it is able to link single file view components and even catch syntax errors in your templates um, at compile time. So this is a big effort. And a uh, major shout out to Mikhail and Taru for working on this. Uh, they've been working really hard on ES plug ESLint plugin view, and I think it's, uh, it's something that greatly boosts the, uh, the confidence when you're working on Vue during the development phase. And then we also have the official Vue test utils, uh, which was born out of Avara, which uh, is a testing library by Ed Yeberg, uh, who I think is probably also here. So big shout out to Ed. And uh, test utils is currently in 1.0 beta. And you can already test it out. We have uh, comprehensive tutorials. And uh, there are even more painless ways to use it, which I will talk about later. And then uh, a short while ago, we also released a major another 4.0 major release for the Vue DevTools. Great improvements coming into Vue DevTools uh, uh, with uh, a lot of new features, uh, including editable state inspector. You can directly edit your state in the DevTools, and things will reflect back into your app. And all these great features, thanks to Guillaume. Uh, and he's also here. So big shout out to Guillaume for working on this. And we also, uh, a short while ago, released an official news source at news.vjs.org. So this is the official uh, newsletter that you can sign up to. And um, we have a curated list of latest things going on in the Vue ecosystem. Plus, uh, Greg and Adam from Vue Mastery also produces a podcast episode for each newsletter, uh, so that if you prefer to listen to something instead of reading it, like while you're driving, this is on, on the, another great option. And outside of the core team, I'm even more excited about the whole ecosystem, because uh, just in the past few weeks, some great things are happening across the ecosystem. And I think it's a sign that the ecosystem is maturing. Nuxt reached 1.0 a short while ago in January. Uh, so I want to say a big congratulations to the Shopping Brothers for making this work. Nuxt is fantastic uh, abstraction on top of Vue that provides a very streamlined experience for making uh, building server-side rendering apps. And they'll talk about it in details later today. Just three days ago, Futify, one of the probably one of the best uh, component UI libraries around in the Vue ecosystem, also just reached 1.0. So, uh, congrats to John for uh, making this milestone, and uh, uh, there are, uh, he also has a pretty uh, successful Patreon campaign going on. So, I would encourage anyone who's found Vueful helpful in your work to donate to, to his Patreon campaign. Native Script View also reached 1.0 three days ago. I don't know if you know it, but Jan Looper is going to tell you more about it later in her talk. And we also are seeing a lot of better integrations with external tools. VS Code, uh, you probably have used VS Code with Vader, and you know it's a, it's a fantastic extension. And the author Vader now works on the VS Code team uh, to improve Vue support. And they recently shipped a feature that allows you to directly debug Vue applications inside VS Code. And send co uh, Code Sandbox uh, provides an online service that allows you to create, edit, uh, view applications using single file components directly in your browser. You don't even need to uh, use a CLI to scaffold anything. Uh, this is also great for prototyping and uh, debugging, making bug reports. Uh, prettier, uh, the code formatter. Uh, added support for view single file components in 1.1, so it automatically formats the code inside your script blocks. Uh, and even I, I believe it also formats the style section in your single file components as well. 
Ionic 4 has been built from the ground up using web components, and now it works with Vue as well. Um, so there have been some tutorials floating around as well. So um, a lot of external tools are also getting better Vue support. OK, so now this thing that I want to talk about, which is something I've been working on for the past two months pretty intensively, uh, and it's the next generation of the Vue CLI. So in the past, uh, in the, the prior generation of Vue CLI, the 2.x versions, had some problems. Um, the goal was of, of the Vue CLI was to provide a way for developers to get up and running with Vue applications as fast as possible. Unfortunately, the, the complexity in the current front-end tooling ecosystem requires a lot of boilerplate and uh, hand wiring if you want to set up everything from scratch, which is why we provided the CLI in the first place. However, as we maintain the original template, we start to realize there are some problems that um, the previous approach did not address. For example, um, uh, 2.x templates are not upgradable. Um, once you scaffold a project, you're completely on your own. Consider you're, uh, it's similar to using Create React App and you're already ejected from, <laughs> from the get-go. Right? So um, they are not upgradable, especially if you have edited the configurations yourself. Naked configuration files inside the project are also intimidating. So if, if you've cracked open the, the build directory in a, in a 2.x VCI project, you probably know what I mean. The Webpack configuration files are quite long and uh, takes, a quite, uh, takes a bit of Webpack expertise to understand and be able to modify anything. Uh, template maintenance also becomes more and more difficult. So Linus has been working on um, maintaining the Webpack template for a while, and we start to realize uh, because of all the features, all the possible permutations, combinations of different features, uh, having them all handled at the template layer inside a web, uh, CLI template was becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, you will have a lot of uh, statements that's cramming together, just trying to get the dependencies right. Uh, and, and most importantly, in a single file, you will see concerns from several different aspects of the, of the template. For example, uh, in the package JSON file, you will see a lot of, condi uh, in the template, you will see a lot of conditional blocks from uh, the unit testing aspect of it, from the end-to-end -to -end testing part of it, and from other features. Every feature will need to inject something into package JSON, and the file just becomes bloated and really hard to maintain. And finally, fork templates need to constantly sync with upstream. So last year, um, the Chrome team um, stepped, uh, they, they, they forked the original uh, official Webpack template, and they worked on a PWA template. So some of you ha might have used that template. Um, and that template worked really well when it fir was first forked. But as the, the upstream Webpack template started to evolve and we we're making more changes, we required manual effort to, to sync all those changes downstream to the PWA template. And that created a discrepancy between the two versions. And uh, if the, the maintainer of the PWA template uh, didn't pull the changes uh, downstream in time, um, there are differences uh, in the build setups between the two templates. So we want to address these problems. So we looked at a lot of existing solutions in the ecosystem. Um, obviously, there's Create React App, but the approach, uh, in my opinion, is a bit extreme because it's either use, use it just at, like it is, or you eject if you want to tweak the Webpack config. So um, I want to create, create a, a tooling system that allows you to config Config, uh, configure the internal co uh, Webpack configuration if you want to, but I don't necessarily want to uh, force users to, e uh, to eject, because when, once you eject, you're on your own. You can no longer update uh, when there are upstream updates. Um, and there is another great inspiration. Uh, some of you might have, have used uh, POI, which is a great uh, tool in the Vue ecosystem by Egoist. Um, and POI is great in the sense that it, uh, it, it has this core Webpack configuration that's abstracted away using Webpack Ching. And uh, different pieces of functionality can be added to your base app uh, in the form of plugins or presets. So each preset will inject additional Webpack, conf 
Webpack configurations uh, before it finally gets resolved into the raw Webpack con configuration. Um, the, the issue with POI is that it doesn't come with scaffolding. And scaffolding is still an important part of the CLI. So POI is meant to be this um, really fast get going tool. You install it, and you can just create a single file and can start using it. But it doesn't help you with uh, structuring things. Uh, it doesn't help you say, when I want uh, unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, TypeScript, everything together, I want to have a project that's ready to go uh, with all the necessary files generated for me. So um, this is how the new VCLI is born. Um, it's, it's very heavily inspired by POI, and it uses a plugin-based architecture. Um, it's zero config by default. So if you use it and you're happy with the default config, in most cases, you don't need to do anything. But everything is still configurable without the need to eject. And this is how it looks like. So I'm going to take a risk and just do some live demonstration. All right, so this is what happens when you use, install the new VCLI and use the view command. So you can see there is um, the commands include create, invoke, inspect, serve, and build. So init is uh, really just an alias to the old uh, view init. But the new view create looks like this. So let's view create, low. And as, as you can see, I have some presets already. So this is a save preset from, from my uh, prior experiments. But just to show how things work, um, when you run it for the first time, you will see the default and the manually select features. And mo in most cases, you want to customize things by going with manually select. And it's, it comes with a lot of built-in features. So first class TypeScript support. Let's just pick everything. Progressive web app support, router, Vuex, CSS preprocessors, linear unit testing, end-to-end -end testing. Let's take everything. So class style component syntax allows you to write components using a class-based syntax. Well, just for the sake of demonstration, why not? Um, we, we can also use Babel alongside TypeScript. So uh, this, allow, uh, this allows TypeScript to only uh, do the, compile, uh, the transpilation from TypeScript to ES2015. And the rest of the build pipeline will be delegated to Babel, because we can use Babel preset env to intelligently uh, determine what polyfills to include in your app. Uh, and um, our Babel configuration reads the browser list targets in your package JSON, uh, so, uh, which is also used by auto prefixers. So once you set the range of browsers you want to support, Babel and PostCSS will intelligently determine the, the auto prefixing and polyfill needs in your app. You can pick a CSS preprocessor, and it comes with linter setups. So you can use ESLint with Airbnb standard, prettier even. So let's use that. We also have lean on save, lean on lean and fix on commit, unit testing with Jest, and end to end testing with Cypress, which is uh, it's Chrome only, but with the great, really great interactive mode, and Nightwatch, which is slandom based, which allows you to run tests in more real browsers. Let's go with Cypress for now. And you can put your configuration in dedicated files or in package.json, depending on your personal taste. And you can choose to save this preset for future projects. So once you are happy with the configuration, save it. And next time you create a new project, you don't need to fill out all of these again. You just use the preset. So I'll skip this save for now. OK, so this warning is because our Parser is uh, our TypeScript is using 2.7, and the parser um, supports. It actually works pretty well with 2.7. It's just it decides to throw a warning there. So let's go into the project and take a look. Uh, and ooh, okay, let's. Um, I'm gonna make the font size really big. Oops. Okay, and so, well, this is pretty small, right? But you can see it scaffolded all the files, uh, and most important thing is in the package JSON. So you can see the scripts here. Uh, we have 
So all the plugins have injected the scripts for them. Interestingly, um, all the features that you just saw that we picked just now are implemented in the form of plugins. And uh, each of them, for example, the, the unit test plugin injects this command into package.json. The end to end plugin injects this command into package.json. And the unit test plugin also injects the view CL server test command into the service. So the service is a runtime package that is locally installed into your project. So once the project has been created, all the dependencies that it needs is in, uh, included in its, dependent, uh, in its package JSON. So once created, this, uh, this project can ju just be uh, committed into Git, sent to another developer, and they can just npm install with all the dependencies, and they can get up and running even without Vue CLI. And uh, so let's uh, run the server. I hope it works. Oops. All right. So the new app. And it comes with uh, all these uh, links to, it, it automatically infers the links to the documentation based on the pl plugins you've picked. OK. So another thing I want to show is although it's great that you can uh, scaffold a VCI project uh, with all the dependencies built in, sometimes you just don't want to wait for the NPM install. So here's a cool thing you can do. Um, I'll just uh, create something. Template, hello, Vue.js Amsterdam. OK, so we have the app, app view. I don't know if you can see it, but now I say view serve app dot view. Whoops. Aha, OK. Let's see. Right, because I didn't wrap it in a root node. OK, so with this file, So you can start rapidly prototyping applica uh, Vue.js applications with just literally a single view file from the command line. Once you install uh, a global package called Vue CI Service Global, uh, and this uh, you can also do view build app.view, which will produce. A bundle, and you can deploy this. Uh, it's a, it's you can actually build, build, prototype, and deploy apps uh, just without any npm dependencies. Um, and there is also, if you build target web component. Whoops, you build web component, and, and I need to give it the name with a dash. So my app. So this create, still creates a JavaScript file, but this JavaScript file contains a real web uh, custom element. Uh, once you include this file into your page, it'll register a custom element called my app. And uh, then you can just use this my app element just like a normal DOM element. You don't even need to. Um, so you need to, do need to include a view runtime on the page, but um, when you're actually using the element itself, it doesn't matter if it's used in a Vue app or not. You can use it in any app. You can use it in React, in Angular, or just vanilla JavaScript. OK, so um, let's also go to the Hello app. And we can do something like um, yarn build target wc async um, and give it a grip pattern. So this command will find all the view files in your project and build it into a code slit bundle of web components. So you will have, so let's build, whoops, OK, that one failed. So let's see what is going on. 
Uh, I'll, sco I'll skip this one because, uh, but you get the idea. We'll have a bundle of multiple, uh, multiple JavaScript files. And the cool thing is uh, you will get an entry chunk. Um, the entry chunk will, in most cases, be only 7KB minified and 3KB gzipped. And you include that one file. It registers all the view components that you've just built uh, into real custom elements. And then you can just directly use those custom elements. And when a ele custom element instance is actually encountered on the page, it will then fetch the, the in uh, internal in the implementation of the internal view component on demand. So um, you get this really load on demand, lazy loaded custom element. Uh, but you still get the exact same development experience of the familiar view single file components and hot reload during development and all the tool chains that comes with Vue CLI. You can enjoy those benefits during development, but during, uh, when you want to deploy it, you can still deploy it as uh, async web components. So uh, the CLI also comes with a lot of flexibility. So the internal Webpack configuration is abstract with Webpack chain and can be modified in Vue.config.js. Um, so if you're curious about how this works, uh, you can read the documentation. It's already up on GitHub, and it's very quite straightforward uh, to modify small pieces of Webpack, Webpack configurations. And Babel, PostCSS, and YesLink can all be configured with their respective configuration files. Plus, we also want to open up the extensibility of the CLI, because the cool thing about the previous generation of the CLI was that the community could create custom templates. Um, and we want to still enable that to a certain extent, too, in the v new API, although the, the, the next generation of the CLI is, <clears throat> is more zero config, but uh, since there is no more template to pick, there is just one default template. But it's still possible to uh, inject a lot of custom behavior into the CLI by writing custom plugins. So plugins are able to modify the internal Webpack configuration. They can inject file generators. They can uh, have their own custom prompts when you do view invoke. And they can also ingest custom commands. In fact, most of these built-in features like TypeScript, end to end testing, unit testing, they're all implemented using the same standard plugin API. So if you want to, you can write your own plugin API um, your own plugin that implements a special integration into the VCLI uh, for some something special that you want. So I'll be releasing it uh, entering beta. So before this, it was still in alpha stage, but I think it's pretty stable now. So uh, VCLI 3.0 will be in beta today. Thank you. And after that, uh, a few notes on what's coming next. Um, Webpack 4 just came out of the door. Uh, it's in beta now. And we being uh, in close collaboration with the Webpack team, they are keeping us up to date on uh, upgrading some important plugins in the, web in the Webpack ecosystem, uh, making sure they're compatible with Webpack 4. And we're going to upgrade to Webpack 4 as soon as we can, and because, uh, because it comes with some really great uh, performance boosts. 2.6, which is uh, the next miner that uh, we'll be working on, is going to ship with an ESM, ES modules browser build. So you can use um, script type module to, to import uh, uh, view.esm.js directly in the browser without a build step. Uh, ES modules directly in the browser. Uh, it, it's going to also come with better asynchronous hand error handling. So in 2.5, we improve error handling, but one thing that we overlooked was um, asynchronous errors, and we want to improve that. And then you'll see better warning output as well. So um, the view runtime itself reports warnings when you have some syntax errors in the template, but uh, by default, it doesn't come with line numbers before. But there is a great pull request open right now, which we will merge soon, that will give you line numbers and even code frames when you have a syntax error in your template. And then we'll also have uh, v4 iterator support, so we're going to uh, have support for map and set uh, in Vue 4 as well. And then there's also going to be 2.6 next. So this next branch uh, is going to be a branch that will drop older browser support. It will only support latest browsers, browsers that support latest ES features. So for example, proxies. So ES 2015 proxies uh, is very cool. And we're going to use proxies to, to replace the current reactivity system. 
and upgrade the code base to leverage the latest ES features. But the API will remain the, remain the same. There will be maybe 1% of uh, small incom uh, incompatibleness, but 99% uh, of the API remains the same. And in majority of the cases, you uh, as long as you, uh, you're willing to drop support for some of the older browsers, you should be able to just migrate over without doing anything. Uh, both versions will be maintained in parallel. Uh, and uh, so until the, the older browser actually phases out and will then drop support uh, for, the, for the legacy branch. And we're also planning to simplify the API of UX. Um, uh, considering all the new ES features, especially async await. Um, so one, the reason that we have mutations actions separated in Vuex right now is because uh, it allows us to better handle asynchronicity. But with async await, we are exploring some new possibilities. And uh, some of the proposals are pretty exciting. And we will likely eliminate the separation of actions and mutations altogether. So you can just write actions. And that's all I have for today. So thank you.